Until a couple of years ago, the only treatments we had for myasthenia gravis were corticosteroids, non-steroidal immunosuppressants, or pyridostigmine as a symptomatic treatment. Patients that were not responder to the standard of care were then treated with IVIG or PLEX. And both of them carry you know, a lot of problems. PLEX is difficult because you have to admit patients to the hospital in several cases. IVIG is a difficult treatment because it's difficult to find IVIG in general. So it might be better in some countries and worse in other, but it's not a pharmaceutical product. It comes from donors, so it's very difficult to find, to have enough uh, IVIG to treat all our patients. And despite that, these treatments do not uh, create a benefit in every single patient. There are many patients that are unsatisfied because of what we call standard of care. So a couple of years ago, we had the first clinical trial results come out. That was eculizumab. Uh, that is a complement inhibitor, and it opened the road for different complement inhibitors, including ravulizumab, which is an evolution of eculizumab, zelucoplan, which is a peptide. And then uh, some years later, we had the first FCRN inhibitor, which is fgar -tigmot. And after that, we've seen the results of rosanolixizumab, another anti-FCRN. And here in this meeting, we saw the results of the phase three trial of nipocalumab, which is another FCRN inhibitor. And another trial is ongoing with an an another anti-FCRN, which is batoclumab. So in the future, we'll have more and more treatments available, even more for a single class, which is kind of atypical in neurology. We usually have like one treatment in one class and a treatment in another. So the interesting thing is that now we are starting to use these treatments in clinical practice. First of all, by treating what we used to call in the past refractory patients. So those that failed multiple treatments or that despite those treatments had measurable uh, motor um, uh, measurable signs of the disease, like positive MGADL score or QMG, or patients that despite treatment and having a good response had adverse events to these treatments. So now we are treating these patients with either complement inhibitors or anti-FCRNs. Depending on every single country in Europe, there will, might be different reimbursement criteria. So one country might require failure to more immunosuppressants another country to just one immunosuppressant. So this changes the scenario a little bit. But I think that the vast majority of European countries uh, have the same view. So failure to prednisone to one immunosuppressant should be enough to trigger a switch to one of these innovative treatments.